Welcome to Viewpoints. I'm Heather Isfran, and with me today is Jim Walker, Homeland Security Director for the state of Alabama. Hey, Jim. Hello, Heather. How are you today? Excellent. Thanks Good. for joining us. Thank you. So we're going to talk about Virtual Alabama. Okay. And, and what it's about, how did it start, and where is it going? Well, it started after uh, Hurricane Katrina, August or September of 2005. Alabama was one of the states impacted by the storm. And immediately following the storm, a number of us that served Governor Bob Riley went along the coast taking pictures of the images after the storm so that we could go back and show the governor what our coastline looked like post-Katrina. So we take the images to him, and there's a reason why he's elected governor. He's a pretty bright guy. He looks at the imagery that we show him, and he says, you know, I can't assess the damage because this only tells me half of the picture. He said, where are the images of our coastline before Katrina hit? And that way I can marry those up against the damage, and we can really see what the impact was. And we couldn't find the imagery. Uh, so the governor called a timeout and said, hey, I think we can do better than this. Go collect up the imagery uh, pre-Katrina. And uh, we couldn't find it. So it was a long walk back to the governor's office to say, I couldn't find imagery. So he said, I think we can do better than that. We owe the people a little bit better than that. So go figure out a way to capture all of the existing imagery in the state of Alabama so that if something like Katrina happens again, uh, we will be prepared and we will be able to access imagery of what our state looks like, whether it's a hurricane, tornado, terrorist attack, chemical spill, you name it. So we are fortunate in Alabama. We've got some pretty bright folks on our staff. We've got our own resident rocket scientist that was loaned to us by the United States Army. Turned to him and said, uh, hey, this is what the governor wants. Help us find a solution. So he went back into the Department of Defense and other federal agencies looking for situational awareness tools, common operating platforms that would service our needs as a state homeland security effort. Uh, couldn't find it, so we turned to industry and took a number of companies through the paces about <clears throat> what products do you have available today? Are they scalable, maintainable, affordable? You know, we're not one of the more wealthier states. Uh, and, and it's gotta be available to us now. We gotta answer the mail to the governor. Uh, we settled on Google. We bought a license with Google Earth Enterprise and the best way for me to describe Virtual Alabama to you is, is that I know that you and everybody in your audience has gone on their personal computers or their work computers and Googled their house. And when you Google your house, you can just see it on Google's imagery. You can go left and right. You can look at your neighbor's house, the nice new swimming pool your neighbor has that you don't have. But you can't do anything else. But when it's imagery that you own, and in our particular case, the state of Alabama, because we purchased a license with Google Earth Enterprise, when it's your imagery and you type in the address for your house, if you wanted to, on top of your house, layer other useful pieces of information like where are the gas lines to my house, where are the water lines, where are the stoplights in my neighborhood, where are the schools, where are the hospitals, where are the police stations, where the sex offenders live, all of this information you can load on your own imagery. And when we realized that we could do this, we sort of went into a learning curve of approaching different first responder groups. Uh, firefighters now take this tool and they 3D model out all of the buildings uh, that they're responsible for in their jurisdiction. So now a firefighter has a 3D model of a building that he will respond to if there's a fire and he's got the floor plan, all the hazardous materials inside of that building where the citizens will most likely be. You can make a pretty sound argument that it, with that information you're either going to save a citizen's life or a firefighter's life when he enters that building. Uh, when police officers <coughs> and sheriffs know where the sex offenders are in our neighborhoods uh, and they're able to draw a circle around a sex offender's house and then populate where the schools are, the daycare centers, the bus stops and the bus routes, you can learn very quickly if a sex offender has violated his parole and has one of our children at risk mm -hmm. and you can remove him from that residence or put him back in jail. Uh, when our emergency managers are now able to uh, get imagery of before a tornado and now after a tornado within hours and our revenue commissioners are populating parcel data. Who owns this house? How much this house is appraised for? We can look at the damage from a storm and very quickly assess the amount of damage to the state and have imagery that reflects that that damage did actually occur. And it assists us in our negotiations, uh, seeking federal assistance or in understanding the damage to our state. So this is sort of where we, we started. Uh, it took us about 14 months to collect all of the imagery of Alabama's 67 counties. Uh, and we've sort of taken off since then. Uh, we have tools that come with the program that allow us to track traffic speed in real time. We've partnered with the Alabama Department of Transportation and every camera on our roadways, we're able to access and look at real time views of the roadways to see how traffic is flowing. 
So these things start becoming important when you're planning for major disasters or just doing daily work. Uh, we have moved into loading floor plans for our universities, keeping track of student concentration, which classrooms are being used in our universities at certain times of day, certain days of the week. And one of our more exciting aspects now is that we've gone into all of the elementary, middle, and high schools in the state of Alabama, over 1,500. And between now and next November, before Governor Bob Riley uh, is relieved by the election of another governor in the state of Alabama, we hope to have all of the floor plans and emergency data of every secondary school in the state of Alabama. And we're partnering now with the school superintendents, principals, local fire officials, local police officers, sheriffs, and others. So it's mass collaboration mm. to, to create a, uh, a common operating picture for the state of Alabama. And that's just within the Homeland Security world, the things that we're talking about. Uh, my boss, Bob Riley, is a pretty forward-looking guy, and he says, hey, we can use this for economic development, environmental management, conservation of natural resources, for Medicaid, for Children's Affairs. And so all of this information is being layered on top of virtual Alabama in the state of Alabama. And people that had no need to collaborate before are now finding useful pieces of information in other parts of government that now help them do their job better. So it's really sort of, sort of, sort of taken off, and we sort of uh, feel like we still have only hit the tip of the iceberg. There's just so much more to do and learn. Yeah, and it sounds like your partnership with Google Earth has been very fruitful, of course. Can you tell me uh, some of the newer innovations that they've been working with? Uh, you know, yeah, I can. I mean, I, as someone serving in government, uh, it's a pretty good business model because Google will spend about a billion dollars this year on research and development. And whatever funky stuff these scientists up in Mountain View that are walking around in surfer shorts figure out, uh, we get for free. Uh, and uh, as we like to say in Alabama, even during tough economic times, we can still afford free. So we take all of these tools and we try to apply them to make our product better. So right now, Virtual Alabama is a globe uh, and it has a finite set of users that we have, uh, we approve all of the licenses. Uh, and I would invite your license if they have a .gov or a .edu and they want to try to participate and understand more about Virtual Alabama. They can go to our website, www.dhs.alabama.gov. There's a little icon that you can click on that says Virtual Alabama. You can read a fact sheet and you can apply for a license. And we'll give it to you uh, if you pass our screening for, for free. But that's a finite set of users that are keeping track of the data that's on Virtual Alabama today. What we hope to do is to spin off another globe uh, that is available to the general public in Alabama. So for people that are evacuating through our state or trying to cope with a disaster that is ongoing in the state to be able to make a portal available to the public where they can go using their Blackberry, iPhone, laptop, it doesn't matter, and access information that we think is relevant. Uh, where are the closest shelters, hospitals, police stations, hotels, gas stations, evacuation routes, other things that citizens would need to know. Now that's a real public service you know, that you can make available to people in a web world. Uh, that's one area that we're going. Another area where we're seeing a lot of growth, uh, and this was information that was sort of born out of the Mumbai attacks, the importance of social networking and collecting and gathering information. So we want to create a web address where any citizen or first responder or anyone that's, that comes upon a traffic accident or a chemical spill or a tornado or anything, uh, if they have the means to capture an image and then email it to an address uh, that we provide, we can pull that picture out and geocode it, stick it right on the ground where it is in the state of Alabama, and we've got some up-to-the-minute images of things that are happening in our state. So that's sort of an evolution where we see this, uh, this program starting to evolve. And so just to be clear, the, when you say we own this, that would be just the state of Alabama? Yeah, the state of Alabama is, uh, owns virtual Alabama. I mean, we bought the license with Google Earth Enterprise, but they don't touch it. Mm -hmm. uh, and most of the information that we have on our system, because we get a lot of questions about security, is secure. If you are a licensee with Virtual Alabama and you have information that you want to load that only you only want yourself to see or somebody on your staff, you can put it behind a firewall and nobody will ever see it. Google won't see it. I won't see it. Governor won't see it. Only you will see it. Uh, and that was particularly important as we started dealing with schools. We're in the process of trying to upload all of the cameras uh, in all of our schools. And there was an issue that perhaps we were going to be using uh, the video cameras to monitor teacher performance, you know, to get rid of teachers that were non-performing. Uh, and that's not necessarily the case because the person that controls the cameras in our schools today still controls them if they're uploaded on Virtual Alabama. 
in most cases it's the principal. So what we say to the principal is, look, you're in charge of the cameras. Uh, you have them all behind a firewall in your school today. But let's say you have a hostage situation or you have a tornado or some event that happens in your school while kids are there. Uh, go ahead and release the firewall so that the sheriff and the firefighters that are coming to assist you have a way of seeing into the school so that they know how to cope with what it is that they're fixing to face. Let's give them as much information as we possibly can. Now, if nothing happens in the school, keep it behind a firewall. But at the end of the day, when everybody goes home, wouldn't it be smart, Madam Principal, to go ahead and release the firewall so that the sheriff and the police officers can monitor these cameras while nobody's at the school? Because a lot of crime occurs when nobody's at the school, a lot of vandalism, and a lot of bad things. So let's do everything that we can to protect the public's property uh, and, and to be good stewards of the facilities that the people have paid for. So we're trying to to continue to work through that, and we've been fairly successful so, so far. And you've been doing this for a number of years, so I can imagine mm. that other states might have been interested in utilizing this. You know, there has been a, a bow wave, really, around the country uh, to move to what they call virtual Alabama, virtual USA, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. How about virtual Alabama USA version? How about that? That's <laughs> right. even better. But no, for virtual USA, and, and, and what has spawned this is uh, uh, I've had peers and contemporaries in other states that have approached us about trying to do something similar to create this common operating picture within their states. And so <clears throat> in the southeast, with the help of the Department of Homeland Security in, in Washington, the Science and Technology Director, particularly Dr. Dave Boyd, is to let's get these hurricane-prone states in the Gulf Coast uh, sharing imagery. And right now, uh, as we're having this interview in late October of 2009, we are on the verge of doing a regional pilot. And we did a dress rehearsal the other day where we're looking at the virtual Alabama platform and all of a sudden Florida's imagery pops up and Mississippi's imagery pops up and Louisiana's imagery pops up. And now where if I'm hit with a major hurricane or Louisiana or someone else, we will send hundreds of people over to assist, volunteers, first responders. Now we can share imagery. Uh, where are you going? What facilities do you have in your state? What's our mission? What are the evacuation routes? And so we're able to collaborate across states in the country now. And an important component of this is that states are doing different things. Not every state has partnered with Google. The state of Virginia, for example, has partnered with ESRI, has a program called Viper. Mm -hmm. And what's important is, is that I don't want, not only I, but the, my peers, we don't want the federal government to get too far down the road thinking that they should take control of this effort. Mm -hmm. There is an issue of state sovereignty, you know, and I think that my governor is in a better position to understand what product and services he wants in the state that he governs just like every other governor is. So leave it to the governor to determine what platform works best in his state. And the federal government should then come in and uh, take responsibility for some of the governance and what information do you share state to state, what can you do with it. And for states that are using different companies or different products, uh, how can they merge together and work together to collaborate for the greater good. Is that in only times of crisis, or is this a partnership that is? Well, you know, I, I think we're taking baby steps right now. Let's get the let's get the imagery and let's work through the governance because what I have discovered, and what my peers that are attempting to do a project like Virtual Alabama in their state is that the technology part of this is easy. Right. What's tough is the is the governing part, exactly. the operational part. Is the how do I get it done? I mean, whose who's rice bowl am I going to step into in my state, and do they want me there, and do they want to look outside of their own? And that's really where, where the inertia is starting to occur. You know, I'm very, very lucky uh, in my state that uh, I've got a governor that, uh, that bought into the concept, looked at all of his cabinet members, and said, I want it. And uh, you won't be the person that stands in the way. This is what we're going to do in the state of Alabama. His cabinet members, we've all been working together now for about seven years, and uh, we've all bought in. Other states are struggling. Uh, and so you got to kind of find out who the belly button is and who the senior leader is in your state to, uh, to have the largest impact and then go for it and build the political will to do it. But that is the toughest part of this. Uh, so you have your, your state, your locals. How about private sector? How are you incorporating them into this picture? You know, I think if you ask any Homeland Security leader, Homeland Security director in the country, they would tell you the toughest nut to crack is your engagement with the private sector. That's why this schools initiative is so, so important to us is because by uploading floor plans and cameras and emergency data for all of our schools, we've shown success in a government-to-government -government project. So now I think with this success, we can turn to the private sector and say, okay, Mr. Plant Manager, let me show you what we're doing in our schools. Now, can you give me a good reason why, since I know you have a floor plan and I know you have cameras and I know you're manufacturing all sorts of flammable stuff, uh, you can't take 
what you have and put it behind a firewall and keep it. And then when something happens in your plant, have the wherewithal to release it because the same sheriff and police chief and firefighter that's gonna go help at that school is gonna be the one that comes and saves your bacon if something happens at your plant. So I think that if we show success government to government, we've made a pretty strong argument for engaging the private sector. That's great. It's great work that you're doing. It's a pioneering effort, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing all the great things that will come from it. Well, we'll keep slugging away, and I appreciate you having me today. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Heather.